Well, you know, I think the, the distinctive of uh, uh, true intellectual inquiry is the capacity to, how to say, navigate uh, the gray, to deal with nuance, to live in the tension of conflicting viewpoints. And I think evangelicals often are not good at doing that. Well said. We, yeah. you know, we seek the certainty, hmm. the statement that is terse and firm and clear. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, intellectual inquiry and I think depth require that capacity to uh, hold to the tension and often to know that you are being perhaps even inconsistent in some ways and to live in that agony yes. and to keep seeking further illumination from God. Um, even as we know that, uh, you know, there are questions that we'll simply have to ask, uh, ask them when we get to heaven. That's right. And uh, so, you know, I, and I think that's a problem with uh, many evangelicals. We are not very good at inhabiting that domain of uh, nuance and uncertainty. I think that's the mark of every great work of art, of yes. every good novel, of every great piece of research, the capacity to see those uh, different ways of looking at the world or, or focusing on a particular issue, and uh, then to somehow spring from there into another synthesis, but even knowing that that synthesis is simply one more perspective that can be questioned and um, may be wrong, again, and, and being open to, okay, further inquiry. Uh, yeah. uh, how, how do you see Gordon being able to adopt that ethos? Or has it already adopted? Do you think that there's room for that kind of uh, I think Gordon capacity had, to navigate tension? So one of the things that drew me to Gordon uh, a year and a half ago was that I, I do think that Gordon has done a better job of that, embracing the, the tensions inherent with intellectual inquiry and not always having an easy or a pat answer. Gordon has done a better job of that for a longer time than virtually every other Christian college in the country. I, I really do think that's a, a core distinctive of the institution. Mm. Um, it, it comes from the being sort of at the tip of the spear of where Christianity and culture meet and interact with one another, and I think it creates a lot of possibility for our students and for mm. our faculty. Mm. We describe it on campus as freedom in a framework of faith. So what we try to do is to provide both theological and intellectual elbow room for folks to be able to grapple with some of those questions. We have students who uh, come to Gordon who are uh, professing Christians, but they have doubts. We have some students who really go through a dark season of their faith, even while they're in our community. And a lot of folks say, well, you know, maybe we should get rid of them because uh, they're not always uh, hewing to the, the core convictions that Gordon articulates in its statement of faith. My perspective is actually we're probably better suited to help them move through that process than any other community mm. that they could mm. be around. So there's always judgment calls that we have to make to where we were able to hold fast to the essentials, but also to be able to extend grace to folks in the other space as well. Yeah. Well, you've navigated um, both the secular academia and the Christian academia, and your own study reflects those interests. I mean, you, you have a PhD from Princeton University in sociology, I believe it is. Yes, that's right. But you also have a master's in theology from Princeton yeah, University. That's right. You taught at uh, Rice yes. in the area of sociology. Yes. And um, so you, you know, you, you've looked at these two worlds very carefully yeah. and uh, you've tasted deeply of them and you have proven your own skills in both worlds. You, know, you have produced a Pulitzer uh, nominated uh, book that is so highly regarded by people from all kinds of uh, spheres. Um, how, how do you see that enriching the way you approach your presidency? Uh, has, has what what uh, major insights have you gleaned from that dwelling in those two worlds and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, seeing great secular academic achievement and also, you know, what can be done with the Christian education? Any well, one of, one of the things that I really think has been helpful is uh, having taught at Rice and uh, done graduate work at Princeton, I have seen what very fine research one universities can produce if they have a lot of resources. Mm. So, uh, you know, Roberto, there's lots we can do if you've got money. Yeah. And ma it makes a huge difference. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, I bring that kind of perspective, mm. I think, to Gordon, which is helpful. So I've been able to see, you know, how can we make strategic investments? We don't have an endowment that's $4 billion. So if I don't have that large of an endowment, what can I do to be able to leverage what existing strengths we have. And, and so that's, um, I think, a gift that I bring to the college. I also uh, recognize the benefit of having very high standards because it creates a lot more opportunity for students and for the school. The reason why people give money to Princeton University uh, 
year in and year out is because they expect excellence from the institution and it delivers consistently. So what, what we are trying to do at Gordon, and we've been doing for a while, and I'm trying to continue to build upon that, is a commitment that what we will produce, whether it be a public lecture, a published uh, article, a, a classroom experience, or a musical concert, we really want to have a very high standard. The Bible says we work heartily as unto the Lord. And so it seems to me that as a Christian institution, we should have not the same standard. We actually should have a higher standard than you experience at these top flight institutions. So I bring that kind of vision for excellence and deep commitment to doing things well, mm -hmm. not as a, a narcissistic perfectionism, mm -hmm. which I think is really common on major university campuses today, but out of a deep sense of gratitude for what God has done in our life and in the opportunity to bear witness to that. And to glorify God to with glorify our gifts. God. And, uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's a catch-22 situation there in the sense that on the one, you can't... Uh, produce a first-rate research university without money. Yes. Um, and uh, sometimes you can't have money unless you have a great institution that is producing major works that mm. will attract the attention of people who have uh, mm. gifts. And I know that you are navigating that difficult terrain even now, and I'm sure that's one of the big challenges of your presidency, the fact that you're not just uh, challenged with the need to uh, deal with the academic, with the administrative, but I'm sure there's also a big... Um, uh, fundraising mantle that uh, unwillingly perhaps fell onto you. And by the way, I think you're doing a great job of, uh, you know, uh, following that aspect of your Thank assignment you. as well. Thank you. But I think that that's one of the big challenges I think that Gordon faces and a lot of other Christian colleges, uh, how to raise money to attract, you know, excellent faculty, people f who are first-rate scholars, and to have the facilities and the equipment and the dorms that would attract also first-rate students. Yes and uh, first-rate program. So yes. it's, it's a difficult uh, territory there as well. Yes, let me say to your viewers, if anyone would like to make a contribution to Gordon College, we gladly welcome it. Uh, I'm always looking for partners in the ministry of Gordon. And, and that's why you're so here. good at what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> please consider, uh, write to me at Gordon College. We'd be very welcome to receive your gift. Mm. Um, I think that uh, one of the things that really drew me to Gordon is that it's an entrepreneurial venture, and I think there's a lot of possibility at Gordon. And the, the, the French word entrepreneur means a creator out of nothing, making something out of nothing. So uh, in some ways, I do feel like on the development front, I have to create something even without the resources in the beginning to be able to show we can produce things. So we've chosen, we've chosen things that I thought I could bring to the table that could become flagship programs for the institution that could in turn draw more support. So for example, I spent uh, eight years studying great leaders and a program that I studied was the White House Fellowship. And I really mm -hmm. believe deeply that it's the most effective leadership development program in the world. It's been around since 1965. Young people who are in their 20s and 30s moved to Washington and worked directly for a cabinet secretary for one year. Thousands of people will apply every year and about 15 will be chosen. And it becomes a transformative experience for them. So I studied this program for two years as a scholar. I thought I would write a book about it because uh, it was an interesting program. I studied its competitors. I looked at programs in the corporate sector, other uh, government-run programs, as well as those at university campuses, and determined this is the most effective. And then I looked to figure out what made it so effective. I, I'm not going to write a book about it because I've, I've had a change of position, and now I'm in administration and, and not uh, a full-time professor. But what I can do is build a program that's modeled on that. Mm -hmm. And so Gordon has established this past uh, spring the Gordon Presidential Fellows Program, which is mm -hmm. the only mm -hmm. leadership development program in the country on a college campus that's modeled directly on the White House Fellowship. And we're, we're trying to recreate the, the real strengths of that program and creating opportunities for our students. I'm already enormously impressed after just a few months into the program with the caliber of the students who are presidential fellows and what they're able to contribute. And I think that that will be an opportunity for us to raise more support, build more friends for the college because they've seen that we're successful in that venture.